Okay, we actually have another really fun question to dive into here. Um, go get my notes on it too. Uh, the statement reads that we have a familiar demonstration of superconductivity is a levitation of a magnet over a piece of superconducting material. This phenomenon can be analyzed using the method of images. Treat the magnet as a perfect dipole M, a height Z above the origin, and is constrained to a point in the Z direction. Okay, because uh, it has to go up in order to levitate. And pretend that the superconductor occupies the entire half space below the XY plane. Because of the uh, Meissner effect, I don't know if I'm saying that right, B is equal to zero for Z uh, less than or equal to zero. And since B is divergentless, the normal or Z component is continuous, so BZ equals zero just above the surface. All right. Now, this boundary condition is met by the image configuration in which an identical dipole is placed at negative Z as a stand-in for the superconductor. Okay, again, when we're dealing with image problems, they have to be zero somewhere, and they have to be um, equal and opposite. Again, let the symmetry stand in there. I'll go ahead and type up something specific for image problems. Uh, okay, but anyways... So what we see here is that the two arrangements therefore produce a same magnet, <clears throat> same magnetic field in the region Z greater than zero. All right, so A, which way should the image dipole point in the plus or, or, plus or minus Z? Okay, so should uh, the arrow be up or down is what they're asking. And then B, find the force on the magnet due to the induced currents in the superconductor, which is to say the force due to the image dipole Set it equal to mg, where m is the mass of the magnet, to determine the height h at which the magnet will float. This is so cool. I you know, wish I could play with it more, but let's go ahead and dive on in even more to it. Um, and then c, the last part, the induced current on the surface for the superconductor in the xy plane can be determined from the boundary condition of the tangential component of b, not the normal, not the normal component. So B is equal to mu naught K cross Z hat using the field you get from the image configuration. Show that K is equal to um, negative 3M R H over 2 pi R squared plus H squared to the 5 halves power in the fiat direction where R is the distance from the origin. All right. So before we get to doodling this out, because if I show you the diagram, you're going to see which configuration it should be in. What we need to do for A is a little inspection of the how the fields work with the dipoles. So what we want to do is to make the fields parallel to the plane. And in order to do that, we need the image uh, monopoles, or excuse me, the dipoles of the same sign, no, monopoles, right, of the same sign facing each other so that the image dipole points down. Okay, so if we remember how the field lines, the dipoles work, we know that uh, facing opposite, they're going to have similar charges facing one another, and we know that the similar charges, or char I'm saying charges, similar, uh, yeah, the similar uh, field lines are going to want to cancel one another and repulse, repulse each other. With that, the repulsion is going to make them parallel at the XY plane, which is of interest. So we see that we want the image uh, model pull pointing downwards in order to cancel it out. And that's the kind of symmetry of the configuration we want. If we folded this over, you would see that it would point down either way. So that's kind of nice to see. And then for the rest, we see on our diagram, we have M pointing up on a Z, M pointing down, both separated by a distance H from the origin or the XY plane. <coughs> R is the distance from the origin. So vector R1 points down into the plane. Vector R2 points up into the plane. Again, all these things should cancel out and use symmetry to your advantage. With that, let's go ahead and move on to part B. So in chapter 6, we saw that the force on dipoles were, um, here we have uh, 3 mu naught over 2 pi uh, me times um, mi over r to the fourth. Um, so here mi is the image charge and me is the external or the image uh, dipole and then me is the external dipole or the given dipole but you see that they're both the same thing just one's plus one minus okay no big deal there um 
Again, since one is in the opposite configuration, their dot, their dot product works out quite nice. They're in the same plane. So minus a minus gives you positive, and you're fine to work there. Note that R is the separation distance between the two, and since both are distance Z apart, we get 2Z. All right, so let's plug that through, and we see here uh, that that simplifies. Now again, they gave us a hit in the question that the forces are balanced at Z equal H, so go ahead and plug that in. And we set that equal to uh, sum of forces says that this force is equal to the force of gravity, which is mg. And so we'll just go ahead and chug on through. Uh, since that's equal to zero, um, we solve for, I believe we wanted h. Yeah, so since h is to the fourth power, uh, we go, or excuse me, yeah, h is to the fourth power, so we want to keep everything that's to a high power in that same thing, so that's why we didn't simplify 2 to the 4th. And once we solve this thing for h, um, you know, leaving it to the fractional power, that 1 half comes out. And indeed, what we see is that we get uh, 1 half, and then in the brackets, 3 mu naught m squared over 2 pi big mg, where big m is the mass, and then little m is the dipole, and then to the 1 fourth power. This is so fun. This is so cool. You actually get to calculate everything at where it sits up and levitates. That's so cool. All right. Now, C, using the uh, field of a dipole in coordinate-free form, we see that the external dipole and the image dipole fields is, well, BE plus BI. Okay, superposition allows us to do that. So if we go ahead and uh, start chugging away at the stuff, what we see is that, again, R1 cubed. Okay, so if we go back to the diagram, we see R1 is the distance from one dipole to another. Again, since we're, we have a symmetry configuration, we do the same thing here. R2 is the same length, so to speak, and that's all that matters. So that's why we only have, uh, that's why we factor out everything with respect to R1 instead of writing two terms with it. Same idea. All right, so with that, uh, we just got to be careful now because M dot r1 r1 minus m and then on the right hand side the image i pull is negative so it's put negative with r2s there and then as you see we got a negative mz um since that's where the direction is and a positive mz so they cancel out uh z dot uh, r1 and z dot r2 you got to be very careful with uh after that we're able to factor an uh m out of both uh, looks like I made a typo here. Um, that should be a minus 3m z hat dot r2 hat hat r2. Um, that should be a 3 there as well. My bad. But in the next step, we factor out a 3m. So that's probably why I did that. But anyways, we see that we're left with z dot r1 in the r1 direction minus z dot r2 in the r2 direction. And what we know is that r is... Uh, R hat is actually a function of X, Y, and Z hat with certain sine and cosine arguments. Um, so the Z argument is uh, negative cosine here. Um, no, that should be just cosine. I don't know why. I guess it is. Um, so, okay, it is because it's facing down. Yeah, so that's negative cosine there. And then again, we can factor out that negative and we're left with R1 plus R2. Um, again, we can, we're in a situation where the symmetry allows us to combine these two because we know that they both project onto the XY plane via uh, sine theta and R hat. So doing that, we get two copies of sine theta and hence the two there. And the two cancels with the four there. So we're left with cosine theta, sine theta, R hat. But also from the diagram, we can define cosine and sine from opposite over hypotenuse and adjacent over hypotenuse as R over R1, which can be defined as R over R squared plus H squared. Cosine is equal to H over R squared plus H squared. Again, common technique there. And if we plug all these things in, we see that B is equal to negative 3 mu naught M over 2 pi. Uh, R1 goes to square root of R squared plus H, all cubed. And then we see we have that square root uh, cube there and another two copies from the cosine and sine. I don't know why I didn't cancel that two in the bracket. That should absolutely be canceled. Uh, again, another typo. 
um, and then okay, we simplify that down. We see that we have the square root uh, to three plus one plus one, which shows the other two copies. We can condense that to the five halves power, which we do in the bracket, and uh, that simplifies quite nice. Now what we need to also do is that we know that says b is equal to b naught k times z, or the cross product. We can isolate k by taking the cross product of z with b, since the induced surface current is in the xy plane, and then using the back cab rule, which by the way, this method is used in a lot of parts of this book, including chapter eight, uh, quite heavily. So get used to it. Um, this just helps us to use the product rules that we have and isolate where it is since z cross z goes to zero. That's the only reason why. Uh, so using back cab, we see that we get uh, z dot z, which goes to one, and k dot z, which goes to zero. Again, because we know that the cross product to k and z is orthogonal to k dot z. Are, yeah, it's orthogonal to both k and z, so k dot z are going to be orthogonal. All right, so that's how they cancel there. We're left with uh, mu naught k. So k is equal to 1 over mu naught z hat cross b, which, again, we can power through that. z cross r hat is equal to phi hat. Again, if we need to break the r hat down to x, y, and z, then we can reconsolidate later. Um, cylindrical coordinates also help here, so be aware that that's also an option. And then the mu's cancel, so we are indeed left with negative 3mh over 2 pi, r over r squared plus h squared to the 5 halves in the fiat direction, and we are done.